alaikum and very good afternoon. MMU Speaks On Live webinar series is back for its third season. The ninth episode will go live today, Friday 24th September 2021 at 3pm on MMU Facebook page and YouTube channel. Uh, don't miss the chance to discover the world of computing and informatics with Associate Professor Dr. Lee Tak Yong, Deputy Dean's Academic and International Relations from Faculty of Computing and Informatics, and Dr. Ng Kok Wai, Deputy Dean, Student Experience and Alumni, also from Faculty of Computing and Informatics. Learn more about the program offering at FCI, the short name of Faculty of Informatics uh, and Technology. Uh, and how they incorporate industry-led curriculum and provide a scientific, systematic understanding of information technology. MMU Speak On will be hosted by me as Mustafa Mozil, a lecturer, academic counselor, happening live now. Uh, save your date with us. And to jumpstart the show, please help me welcome Associate Professor Dr. Lim Tech Yong, Deputy Dean, Academic and International Relations from Faculty of Computing and Informatics, uh, with his title, Introducing Faculty of Computing and Informatics. Over to you, Dr. Lim. Briefly okay. explain about yourself and also your faculty, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to MMU Speak On live webinar series. My name is uh, Lim Tae Yong. And uh, currently, I'm serving as a uh, one of the deputy dean in computing of uh, in faculty of computing and informatics. Let me open my presentation. Okay, so I would like to thank you for taking the time to join us today and I'll be sharing with you some interesting information related to Faculty of Computing and Informatics, which most of the time we are referred as uh, FCI. FCI was formed in 1997. In the early days, this faculty formerly known as Faculty of Information Technology. Then in 2012, this faculty rebrand as FCI to reflect the position of the faculty as a leader in teaching, learning, and research in diverse areas of computer science and information technology. So let me introduce you to our FCI Dean Office. Associate Professor Dr. Junaidi bin Abdullah is the current FCI Dean who is directly responsible for the recruitment, retention, and development of the faculty. Myself assists in academic matters and international relations while Associate Professor Dr. Chua Fang Fang looks after the postgraduate research and industrial collaborations. TS Dr. Ng Kok Wai, who is also our second speaker for today, he handles the student experience and alumni matter. FCI is also supported by, a, by an administrative team where Mr. Asha, Bin Mat Zin is our faculty manager and he managed the examination, graduation, and postgraduate by research methods. On the other hand, Ms. Dayang Nohayati, as the FCI assistant manager, she looked into the course registration and cost time tabling for various programs, such as foundation program, diploma program, and master by coursework program. And last but not least, Ms. Azina Binti, 
Ahmad, who is also a FCI assistant manager. She handled two bachelor programs, namely BIT and BCS. So today, uh, FCI have uh, 67 academics, where there are three professors, six associate professors, two principal lecturer, one specialist, 19 senior lecturer, 24 lecturers, one assistant lecturer, two foundation senior lecturer, seven foundation lecturer, and two foundation assistant lecturers. So our FCI experienced teaching staff are active in research. They also conduct various technical consultancy and share the best practices from the industry with the students in the classroom. This 67 FCI academic serve around 1,700 students. So at present, FCI is located at Multimedia University Cyberjaya campus. This is the second campus of Multimedia University and it was set up in 1999. Besides FCI, there are also other faculties located at Cyberjaya campus as well, such as Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Management, Faculty of Creative Multimedia, Faculty of Applied Communications, and Faculty of Cinematic Arts. For your information, the first campus of Multimedia University was established at Malacca in 1996. And the campus was known as the University Telecom, or in short, Unitary. To ensure a smooth operations, Malacca campus hosts different faculties, such as Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Faculty of Information Science and Technology, Faculty of Business, and lastly is the Faculty of Law. Okay. So of course, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed our life and the way we interact. COVID-19 also affects different peoples in different ways. Preventive measures were introduced in order to reduce the chances of infections. This includes getting vaccinated, staying at home, wearing a mask in public, avoiding crowded places, keeping distance from others, and practicing good hygiene. So I would like to share with you how MMU and especially FCI adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, on 15th of July, 2021, MMU Cyberjaya campus begins its operation as a mega vaccination center facility. This effort helps to flatten the pandemic curve and at the same time to achieve herd immunity for the nation. MMU Grand Hall could accommodate the administration of 3,000 doses of vaccine per day. For those who have not been vaccinated, MMU Grand Hall is open for walk-ins to Malaysia from 16th of September to 30th of September. Okay, so MMU students can also receive their vaccines here. Okay, besides that, three of our SCI students, namely Siddhat Nagapan, Sean Mark, and Cornelius Pang, have developed an app 
called Sambal SOS. This app helped Malaysians find food bank and location of the white flag where others can extend their assistance during this challenging time. This FCI student have made a praiseworthy efforts in helping the needy community to face this unprecedented situation. Okay. And then we are also like to inform that two of our FCI academics, Professor Dr. Ting Chu Yi and Associate Professor Dr. Wong Lai Guan also took part in assisting the nations to combat against the COVID-19 pandemic through an integrated risk mapping for COVID-19. They were appointed as a member of Academic Science Malaysia Data Scientist Group for COVID-19. Both data science experts help in performing data analysis and model simulation for COVID-19. In year 2020, TS Dr. Timothy Yap Zijuan, a FCI academic, has successfully secured a collaboration project with the Malaysia Digital Economic Collab Corporation, which is also known as MDEC. And this, this collaboration project is to set up a center for big data and blockchain technologies. And this new center of excellence aims to create greater impact on talent development by leveraging on collaborator capabilities, experiences, expertise, and resources to, deal, to deliver quality talent to the industry. This center of excellence also share innovative and practical industry solution and also best practices to our SCI student and SCI academic as well. And besides that, it also will provide additional employment, internship platform and opportunity for students as well. We also would like to share that uh, there is a smart toilet project that won two awards in the same year, 2020. The first award is referred to the Semi Grand Prize at the International Invention Innovation Competition held in Canada. And the second award is the Best of the Best Invention Award at the International Invention innovations and technology exhibitions in Malaysia. This project is led by TS Dr. R. Kanes Haraj Ramasamy, a SCI academic as well. And this project is fully funded by the Telecom Malaysia Research and Development Research Grant since 2018. The Smart Toilet is a system with integration of Internet of Things and cloud-based technology designed for smart building implementation. It can track public toilet usage so that uh, it can optimize the toilet cleaning resources and provide toilet occupancy status update to individual application users. Okay. During this COVID-19 pan, uh, pandemic period as well, FCI also offer various type of uh, certification program on top of our current uh, foundation, diploma and bachelor programs. For instance, one of our FCI academic, Mr. Neil Keelin, provided Microsoft Technology Associate certification program to our FCI students. At Microsoft Technology Associate is an entry level certification that validates fundamental technology skills and knowledge in Microsoft products. 
the student can enroll for Microsoft Technology Associate exam, such as Introduction to Programming Using Python, Security Fundamentals, Database Administration Fundamentals, and others. Okay. So this certification program helps to strengthen the knowledge and skill among our FCI students. In addition, our FCI academics also encourage student participation in competition and apply their skills to solve real world problems. For example, Ms. Nu Aziati Ahmad, a FCI academic, and her student, Mr. Mohammad Hafiz Ghani, have been selected as one of the finalists for the AWS Shape Your Future Awards. They participated in the AWS City on a Cloud Challenge 2020, a competition that recognized the leaders who are shaping society today. This competition was organized by Amazon Web Service and Intel. I also would like to share that our FCI Academy also provides guidance and coaching students on a wide range of academic methods. For example, Dr. P. T. Yang mentor two MMU teams, and both teams won at the Fusion Next Data Challenge in 2019. The first team consists of FCI students, namely Yo Yong Yao, Fu Seng Wei, and Fu Chi Xiong. For the second team, this is a this is an interfaculty collaboration between FIST and FCI students. Okay, there are Tay Wei Long and Kanan Ravinza. During this challenge, the FCI students were given less than twenty-four hours to explore, visualize, and analyze the given data set. Then, the FCI student demonstrate how the explore data can be used to solve real world problems through a pitching sessions. Another example is uh, Mr. Albert Quack, our FCI academic as well, mentoring a FCI, a FCI team and the team emerged as the champion at the Virtual Reality Hackathon 2018. The hackathon was jointly organized by Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission and the MMU IT Society with the support of the Virtual Reality Technology Provider, CLOVR. It was held from 14 December until 16 December 2018 in Cyber Jaya campus. Throughout the event, participants were equipped with technical workshops, industry related talks, mentorships, which prepare and help the participants to create a solution for the fourth industrial revolution. In addition, FCI students are also being given the opportunity to apply and integrate their knowledge acquired throughout their entire study in the form of industrial link final year project. For example, some previous industry link final year project involved industries such as TM1, Azure Innovations, Dell Technologies, 
Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research, Cyber Security Malaysia, and 7-Eleven Malaysia Holdings Perhaps. Overall, the industry link final year project helps to equip our FCI students with the soft skill and capability such as project management, problem solving, and communication skills that are necessary to meet the industry demands. To ensure that our FCI students are able to learn in a safe environment during COVID-19 pandemic, FCI conducted all teaching and learning activities via online mode. FCI also adopted team-based learning as a teaching strategy during digital lecture and digital tutorial sessions. This team-based learning engaged the FCI student knowledge through individual assessment and group collaboration. Majority of the FCI students are satisfied with the learning, with the new learning environment. Okay. FCI is also equipped with physical facility to support student learning activity. When this COVID-19 pandemic ends, FCI students shall be able to return to MMU and they are given the opportunity to use the FCI computer labs. At this moment, FCI has 12 computer labs and each lab can accommodate up to 40 students at one time. In a typical lab session, each student will be given a programming task to solve in the computer lab with the support from a tutor. And we also we like to promote collaborative learning among FCI students. That's where we develop or uh, build a new lab called Innovate Lab. This is a classroom for the future that creates a new physical environment seamlessly blending pedagogy, technology, and space together. Innovate Lab was furnished with four multi-touch tables where each table could accommodate up to six students and the lab has been used for various computing subjects such as software requirement engineering, human-computer interactions, and others. Okay. Uh, in MMU, we also provide a learning point area in CyberJaya campus. And this area is open 24 hours a day. This informal learning space allows the student to socialize with others, to do their individual learning, to have a short break while waiting for the next class to begin. Okay. Other available facilities in MMU CyberJaya campus are comprehensive sports centers, which will include uh, track and fields, indoor sports, arena, gym, four tennis court, squash room, as well as an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Okay. So I have shared with you how SCI adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic and the FCI academic expertise and their research, the FCI student achievement, some professional certification programs, and how we conduct our teaching and learning through online and physical resources. 
So I would like to take this opportunity to share with you as well. MMU has received many recognition and achievements since its establishment. MMU is ranked as one of the top seven among private universities in Malaysia in the QS World Ranking 2021. In addition, World Rank University Ranking has placed MMU in the top two in computer science and top three in electrical and electronics amongst Malaysian private universities. So, MMU was recently awarded the 2021 Graduate Choice Award from Helen Bank. MMU was ranked third in education for the category of most attractive graduate employers to work for in 2021. This ranking was based on the outcome of a poll which exclusively targeted university students. MMU also continued to be ranked in the 351 to 400 band in the Times Higher Education Young University Ranking 2021. This is a unique world ranking for the newer generation of universities. It judges on the basis of five parameters, namely teaching, research, citations, international outlook, and industrial output. As the first private university approved by the Malaysian government, MMU adhere to the strictest requirement for a high quality degree. In 2017, MMU awarded with a self-accreditation status by, M by the Malaysian Qualification Agency, which is also known as MQA. This is a status granted by MQA to university which are confirmed to have robust internal quality assurance system. MQA empower MMU standards with self-accreditation status to accredit its own programs based on the Malaysian qualification framework and others relevant standards such as uh, policy of MQA and the Ministry of Higher Education. In 2017, MMU was awarded the Premier Digital Tech University status by the Ministry of, of Higher Education. In other words, MMU is recognized by MDEC as a preferred university, especially when it comes to the digital technology and information technology courses for tertiary education. Thus, MMU will continue to supply highly skilled graduates needed by the digital economy, both locally and globally. Before I end my presentation today, I also would like to share with you that MDEC has tracked digital vacancy on five popular recruitment platforms in Malaysia since June 2020. MDEC found that the number of digital jobs increases to more than 56,000 vacancies as at April 2021 with the largest share of vacancy posted on LinkedIn. The most popular job posted were in software development, data science, IT services, and e-commerce. This trend suggests 
a promising career opportunity in digital technology related discipline. So as a premier digital tech university, SCI is offering various academic programs such as Foundation in Information Technology, Diploma in Information Technology, Bachelor of Computer Science with Honours, okay, and also Bachelor of Information Technology with Honours in Information Systems. If you would like to join FCI, MMU September 2021 intake is now open. MMU also provides uh, financial assistance for those who need them. And please join or please visit our websites at mmu.edu.my slash intake for more information. Thanks for taking the time to get to know our FCI. That's me at the end of my talk. So I will hand over to Intek Mustafa. Thank you, uh, Prof. Dr. Lim. It was very uh, insightful, comprehensive information on your faculties and your activities. Okay, to move on with our show, I would like to uh, pass the floor to Dr. Um, Kok Wai with his uh, title, um, Motivation and Discipline Enough for Success in the Faculty of FCI. Over to you, Dr. Dr. Your turn. Your mic is off, I think. <laughs> Your mic is off, okay. Dr. Yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, I share my slide. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, a very good afternoon to the moderator, Chemus, uh, colleagues, uh, students, and friends. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Ng Kok Wai, Deputy Dean of uh, Student Experience and Alumni from FCI MMU. MMU speaks on FCI. I believe that my topic today uh, is not only related or applicable to FCI students, uh, it can be applied to many other students in MMU and outside MMU. My topic today is, are motivation and discipline enough for success? Uh, for, for those who are currently studying, perhaps uh, the success may refer to achieving good CGPA or good results in, in any subject study. Uh, for researchers or postgraduate students, uh, perhaps the success may refer to uh, successfully publish a, table, a paper, a research paper in high tier journals or conference or successfully complete their thesis. Anyone knows that success is not a smooth or straightforward path. It is a path that full of challenges, blocks, sweats or perspire and painful experience. It requires a lot of time, patience, passion and effort uh, to achieve the success. Success comes from many factors. I categorize it into internal and external factors. External factors are like the family support and friend supports, whereas internal factors come from individual effort. My topic today is addressing on the individual effort, right? 
uh, always we heard of enough motivation and discipline that will bring to a success. Is it a reality? Here I have prepared uh, two examples uh, to think about. Okay, for the uh, first example, uh, imagine we set an ambition, uh, ambition to build uh, six or eight packs apps this year, for example. To achieve this, we go and buy uh, good sport shoes, uh, sport attire, exercise mat to motivate ourselves, right? We go and register as a gym member. Uh, we join a WhatsApp group of people with the same interest to motivate us. Uh, we watch related videos uh, on building the apps. We attend the uh, webinar on muscle building. Uh, would this be tremendously motivated? Okay, think about it. Okay, let's go to uh, discipline. Uh, for the discipline, uh, we spend two to three hours a day to do sit up, to do muscle twist or squeeze. Uh, we make friends with those uh, sharing the same interests. We increase the protein intake every day, stop eating processed food and etc. So this is normally uh, what will happen uh, in the results. Uh, in week one, usually uh, majority of the people, yeah, they, of course, uh, they find nothing happened to their, you know, there's, there's no six pack, huh? uh, but there is a little, there perhaps a little bit, you know, pain, huh? muscle pain and tired. In week two, uh, the muscle may become more pain and still uh, not much uh, change to the body, uh, but it is more tired, right? After one month, uh, uh, still not uh, observe uh, much results, uh, but start feeling uh, a bit down, you know, because of uh, not observing any results. Uh, then perhaps, uh, you know, start busy with work, uh, no time to go for gym and etc. And after two months or second months, uh, still not observing uh, any changes. And, you know, according to uh, the expert, uh, to build six pack or eight pack, it takes uh, at least 15 to 20 months to see the result. But usually after two months, many people will start giving up. But don't you think that the motivation that we put in and the discipline that we put in are not uh, enough? But why we couldn't achieve a success? What went wrong? Okay, before we go, go to the solution, let's observe the uh, second example. Okay, uh, second example is to pursue a master or a PhD study, for example, uh, for example. In week one, um, researchers, uh, you know, downloaded a lot of papers, uh, a lot of uh, related research papers to read, write a very long, uh, you know, introductions uh, in chapter one. They may stick a lot of uh, or many motivation words on the wall or around their PC, you know, to motivate them. Uh, in week two, perhaps uh, they have a long discussion with their supervisor. Uh, good progress, and they may make friends with uh, other postgraduate students, you know, uh, to. 
yeah, to share their experience, uh, to share their knowledge, uh, and attend research seminars. You know, yeah, these are normally the motivations that the the uh, researchers they they put in. So um, yeah, so the motivation is consider uh, tremendous a lot as for the discipline uh in week one usually uh, usually the researchers spend uh, eight hours uh, every day on research uh, consistently reading the papers uh, in week two uh, spend uh, you know, reduced to two hours uh, due to week one the uh, overwork you know which is okay yeah, and after one month, perhaps uh, the researchers uh, start feeling, you know, tired. They need to go for mental rest, go for traveling, uh, pursue something that is not related to uh, research activities. So, and after what well, a month later, uh, they still, uh, you know, look for some uh, rest and etc so as a as a result you know from the analysis uh, we can see that uh, in week one the researcher uh, are very motivated very disciplined you know very consistent uh, confidence and spend a lot of time on research uh, in week two uh, it start you know things uh, slow down uh, and after one month, you know, tired of tired of uh, reading or uh, you know writing uh, thesis, and then the the following month, you know, they may feel they may start hate uh, uh, doing research or reading papers and hate writing. So this is usually uh, happen uh, happen to the uh, <clears throat> the student. But if you refer back to uh, the motivation and the discipline that they put in don't the, the motivations and discipline enough to drive them to uh, success so actually what's went wrong so what could be the factor huh, for success <clears throat> as we know the motivation and the discipline now do not work you know and both the the strong motivation and uh, discipline that happened in the beginning why why they reduce and they cannot last long you know they down go down the hill are they not the main factor for the success right so the motivations why the motivation reduce and go down and it uh, same happened to the uh, discipline the uh, what can actually ensure ensure the strong motivation and discipline last long you know so the answer is habits I imagine uh, we brush uh, teeth every day have we have you ever felt tired or skip brushing have you ever uh, skipped showering why not skipping them why don't we feel bored or hate brushing or showering yes that is the habits you know can can we apply the same habit on building 
apps or writing thesis? The answer is yes. Uh, to be honest, <coughs> building a <coughs> habit uh, is not easy. It takes a very long time to build. Uh, here, let me introduce uh, four techniques for building the habit. They are uh, to make it easy to observe, think as much benefit as possible, make it a simple action, get as much rewarding as possible. Right. So make it easy to observe. Uh, do you know why watching computer, watching watching computer or TV is so tempting? You know the the reason is that they are placed at the living room. You know a space where we always bump on or we see them. They are eye-catching and they are so easy to be switched on through, you know, remote control. So same thing to a mobile phone. It is always placed on the table, easy to grab. Yeah. So if you want to build a reading habit or to build a research paper reading habit, try to put the paper, research paper on the table where it is easily seen and grabbed. Don't keep them in computer file, in computer or file them up. Don't put them in a book rack or bag. The more difficult you achieve them, the least you will read them. You will read them, yeah. Same for jogging. If you place the sports shoe near your working table or the place where you always, you know, passing by, the chances are you will wear it, you know. Uh, because it keeps signaling uh, in our mindset and within our viewing area. Uh, buy the shoe that are easy to weigh, the one that uh, we just put our feet in uh, without the, the, the string uh, to tighten it. So in contrast, uh, you may apply the reverse uh, of these techniques uh, to remove or change the bad habit. For example, uh, to prevent playing mobile phone game, you may delay the game every time after playing, you know, so that next time when you want to play, you need to find the game in the app store and restore, reinstall it before you can play. Uh, set different password to access the game and etc. Uh, to complicate the process to or the access to the game. Uh, with this uh, complicated or long process, uh, one will normally give up to play. Uh, the second technique is to think as much benefit as we can, we, that we can gain uh, as possible. If you want to, let's say, uh, if you want to improve uh, uh, English skill, you know, uh, try to uh, watch uh, movie, uh, watch English movie is one of the ways. Uh, and this way is also uh, quite tempting huh? instead of reading this the boring uh, books yeah if if uh, we can connect our which or hope uh, to our goal uh, it will be more effective uh, for example uh, jogging can and improve uh, our health, uh, we can connect it to gaining a muscular body or a curved body shape. 
Uh, another example, like uh, publishing a paper. Yeah, beside you know meeting the requirement uh, as one of the requirement of the university, uh, one can you know publishing the research paper. You know we can connect it or relate it to you know improving our citation index, uh, or we you know. It can get a publication rewards, you know, and it may welcome other researcher to contact and collaborate with us, and you know, to and also uh, may have a chance to get a copyright or patent, you know, our paper, and etc. Uh, there are a lot of uh, benefits uh, that contribute to uh, to this goal. Right. The third technique, which is to make it a simple action. Imagine uh, if a thief wants to steal a thing. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, nothing in this world is unstealable or cannot uh, be uh, stolen. <coughs> the only worry uh, that's the thief is how long it will take to steal, right? So to prevent things to be stolen, the best solution is to apply or apply a more, either to apply a more complicated lock, you know, a more complicated lock or to apply more locks to delay the stealing process. Okay, if things is complicated, you know, we always uh, wouldn't, wouldn't want to do it. Hence, try to make things simpler, then only we can, uh, you know, we can complete it fast or within a short period of time. The main purpose here is to not seek for perfection, but to encourage action taken and the completion of the mission or the goal. Uh, one may apply uh, two minutes methods uh, to to uh, uh, work on these uh, techniques. Uh, what is two method techniques? Uh? Uh, for example, let's say we dislike jogging, right? So what we can do is we break the task into two minutes. Uh, uh, take for example, we spend two minutes, you know, to go to shoe rack, wear the shoe, you know, and after two minutes pass, we take off the shoe and go back to sleep or go back to our original practice or our original work. So this motion uh, is to is to 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 take an action and complete it within a short time. You know, after you get used to this. Uh, in coming time, after you wear the shoe, you can you can extend two more minutes, maybe to make a small round outside your house and come back. You know, don't quickly rush to spending one hour or two hours to complete the task. So you can improve uh, this by, you know, you can re improve this technique uh, by reducing the time or distance. For example, if you want to improve drinking of water, instead of every time, you know, walking to get the water, you can ready a big bottle of water next to you. Instead of traveling to the gym room, you can do the gym at home first. 
you know so you make the action simple and easy to take uh, within a short time okay my last techniques uh, the fourth techniques that is to get to get as much rewarding as possible before the concept of brushing the teeth uh, people didn't have the habit uh, to brush teeth after the factory added some fresh feeling to the uh, toothpaste and it produced you know a lot of bubbles uh, then only people started uh, attracted to brush teeth nowadays if no if no fresh feeling or bubbles uh, people may feel uh, not uh, uh, not uh, comfortable you know yeah they will for sure go to uh, 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 yeah brush their teeth yeah uh, same to uh, dubbing, uh, dubbing chewing gum. Uh, it started in uh, uh, 1800, uh, but only got common in 1891. Many people like, like it because of its double strength paper mint uh, flavor. Many dentists even recommended their patient to chew gum, to chew uh, sugar-free gum to reduce the bacteria in mouth that causes uh, cavities. Yeah, so to, to form a habit, the rewarding system uh, is very important. Uh. The more rewarding it is, the more frequent uh, it will be done. So the rule of habit is that rewarding will bring more repetition of a habit punishment will dominate a habit uh, even a small reward uh, will bring a totally different outcome so as the conclusions uh, i have introduced uh, four techniques here so the first technique is remember to place the things that you want to do at the observed area, easy to observe area. The second technique, that is to think as much benefit as you can gain yeah, from the goal. And the third technique is to make things simple, simple to act, simple to take uh, action. Yeah. And the last technique is uh, to get as much uh, rewarding as possible uh, from the uh, from the go. So uh, that's uh, end my uh, sharing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mustafa, uh, back to you. Testing one, two, three. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah, All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Angkor Wai. It was very uh, motivational and there's a lot of discipline involved in order to become a computer, what they call it, a uh, technique, curl peoples, and get things done for uh, real world uh, solutions. All right. Uh, we do receive quite a number of questions here from our audience. Uh, one is from Inchit Sabri Abdul Latif. I'm going to ask a question to Dr. Lim. Uh, Inchit Sabri was asking about what is the difference between program in faculty of computing and faculty of information and science, even though the measuring is the same, for example, security and data? This question from our Facebook, our Facebook page. Dr. Lim. Hi, Did you thank you, Mr. Yeah, sure. Mustafa. Okay. Um, of course, uh, there are similarity and also differences. Uh, one is that FCI programs are offered in CyberChaya and FIC uh, programs, uh, they are offered in Malacca campus. So this is one of the major differences. And of course, if you look through the program carefully, especially the bachelor program, if you are referring to the bachelor program, uh, 
our FCI programs are offering as a Bachelor of Computer Science. So when the students want to join a Bachelor of Computer Science, uh, their entry requirements will be a little bit uh, different. Okay. So uh, the student required to have at least a credit in additional maths in order to enroll for our Bachelor of Computer Science. And our Computer Science uh, Bachelor of Computer Science have four major specializations, okay, which are data science, cybersecurity, software engineering, and game development. Okay, on the other hand, uh, Faculty of Information Science and Technology, if you look through carefully, uh, the bachelor is called Bachelor of Information Technology, okay. So when you have a, a information technologies, their entry requirement will be slightly different. So it does not require additional maths, but it's only that you need to have a mathematics at SPM level with the credits. Okay. So of course there are others uh, with entry requirements that you may want to consider. So that, that's why they are catered for two different group of uh, prospective students. Like, uh, I think, I hope that I answer the questions. And of course, uh, in uh, Bachelor uh, of Information Technology, they are covering uh, others as well, like security technology, business and intelligence and analytic, data communication and networking. And they also offer a different type of uh, Bachelor, which is called Bachelor of Science Bioinformatics. Okay. And they also have another one called Bachelor of Computer Science Artificial Intelligence. I hope that I answer your questions. Okay, thank you, Prof. Dr. Lim. <laughs> let me let me move on to uh, Dr. Ng Kok Wai. Back to your topic just now, Dr. Ng. Uh, how do you define your FCI students' habit at the moment? Uh, yeah. Do thank they you. have enough discipline to work with? <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, uh, FCI teachers mostly the technical subjects. Uh, it needs a, a lot of uh, practice and training, uh, especially the uh, programming and mathematics subjects. I, I won't categorize a FCI student into any specific uh, habit because uh, different people, they have different habits. Uh, but what I will say is uh, not many students are born with the programming thought mindset, you know. So therefore, a uh, habit, uh, habit is uh, super important so that uh, the student will not easily uh, give up or slowly lose their motivation and uh, discipline, you know. So habit will always uh, make sure the student uphold and consistently working on their uh, uh, challenges and keep their passion, uh, passion uh, uh, last long to their future career. Yeah, that, that's my opinion. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you have a bunch of good students there then. <laughs> okay, let me get back to uh, Prof. Dr. Lim. Uh, questions here. Uh, what is the difference between foundation in information technology and diploma in information technology, what is the difference between the two? If one to make a, a what they call it, a decisions, which one is which, which one is the best okay. option to start with? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mustafa. Of course, uh, both programs, uh, foundation and diploma programs, foundation in IT and diploma in IT, uh, they are served to build the student knowledge on uh, mathematical and problem solving skill as well as practical computer skills before pursuing their bachelor degree programs. Uh. Okay, uh, the differences is uh, a diploma in IT is highly focused on industry specific skills. Okay, they want to prepare the students for the working world. Thus, uh, the diploma in IT has a longer duration, uh, which the student have to take uh, about two years to complete 
And uh, in order to do that, uh, the diploma in IT required the student to complete the industrial training period as well before they complete their programs. And upon graduation, the diploma of IT students uh, may apply for work directly. Uh. And of course, if the student decided not to work, but decided want to continue his or her study, uh, the diploma in IT student can enter straight into our second year of our bachelor degree program upon their graduation. Okay. So uh, another difference is that uh, the tuition fee for this uh, diploma in IT for this year is 23,000 uh, ringgit. Lah. So for the foundation in IT, right, uh, it's also focused on theoretical knowledge in order to prepare this uh, foundation student for entering our Bachelor of Information Technology and Bachelor of Computer Science. Of course, uh, we, we try to equip our foundation students with the content of uh, additional mathematics which require in SPM level. Uh, as usual, uh, because this is uh, like preparing their knowledge only, so foundation in IT is in our faculty is only one year program. And this one year experience in the universities would help the foundation in IT students uh, to make a better suitable decision later uh, if they want to continue. Okay. And uh, for this year, our foundation in IT, the tuition fee is 6,000 only. So uh, it's a discount and then uh, uh, already discount until 6,000 and then we would like to uh, encourage if you are really interested to pursue your studies, uh, you are encouraged to take this opportunity to enroll in our foundation program in this upcoming September intake. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay uh, Dr. Lim. We have come to an end, but before we end, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Ong Kok Wai, this is your oh. last question, Dr. Ong, uh, oh. with regard to uh, uh, what they call it habit. Can one habit be improved quickly if the students like, you know, join your faculties? Can they, you know, quickly change their habit to make it more positive and more motiv motivated to start the programs? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Yes, sure. Um, uh, my answer is try to maximize uh, the four techniques uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that, that is to, if you want to form a habit fast, right? Yeah, you, we try to place the, the things that we want to achieve uh, at the uh, a very uh, easy and uh, easy to observe uh, area. So the, it increase the chances to grab the object and and read it uh, and so on, you know. And the second method uh, that is to uh, think as much uh, benefit that we can gain uh, from the goal, you know, that, that will motivate us. And the third method that is to make things as simple, uh, simple so that uh, we can uh, complete it within a short time, you know. So this uh, actually encourage, uh, encourage us uh, to take action. You know, take action. And the last technique that is to get as much rewarding you know, as possible from the goal. You know, we when we perform something, yeah, this thing later will you know will reward uh, us uh, on other things. So this will uh, in directly uh, uh, motivate us, uh, and so we will continue working on it. You know, uh, so uh, and slowly this will uh, form a habit. You know, so once we have the habit, uh, uh, we wouldn't feel tired. We wouldn't feel uh, boring, you know, to do uh, to perform uh, the uh, or to achieve the goal. You know, so so uh, this is my answer, yeah, for improving uh, the habits uh, quickly. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ong Kok Wai and Dr. Lim Tech Yong. It was very uh, enjoyable. Uh, session with you guys very insightful and a lot of information from the faculty and also uh, from the industry uh, point of view uh, thank you audience if you have any further questions uh, you can drop by at our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel and drop us a line or two and then we're gonna answer 
to you uh, accordingly. Uh, thank you for your information again. Thank you for your time spending with us. We appreciate it very much. And thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Multimedia University, because MMU is you. Leading the digital future. Visit mmu.edu.my.